What's up, everybody? And again, you guys, your review for Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 10, Episode 9, The Peaches of Wrath. Question of the day. What the hell? Ah, sorry. Watch went off. <laughs> Would you or have you ever gone to a medium energy reader psychic? I haven't. I don't think that I necessarily would. So, yeah. That's just not my thing. It's not, it's not my thing. Alright, so... We start off with Portia. Apparently, she's been casted in a revamp of To Complete A Game. And I saw some names. I'm like, okay, Tawana gonna be in there. But I saw Vivian Green. I'm like, now, nah, if y'all don't know Vivian, Vivian Green, because I ain't... I'm like, okay, this could, be, this could be cute. But I wasn't here for the acting. They was like, oh, she can cry on cue. Uh, it's not really what that was, and a lot of the times, Portia really isn't dedicated to the role. Granted, she was dedicated to the role she played on, you know, season nine of the reunion, but it is what it is. We got Sheree and Kim. Kim says she's never dealt with somebody like Kenya. Whatever. Uh, Sheree mentions uh, the tension that you know with the girls and Portia, and Kim says she knows a lot. And then it was the whole. Portia and Candy having their thing. She was like, yeah, that is a thing, but you know, I know a lot about Candy and the threesomes. And she said, something isn't right up here if you're willing to share your husband with somebody else, but it was okay when you were sharing Big Papa with his wife. But okay. Alright, all alright. I don't, I don't judge. I don't judge. I just want to point that out. What else we got? Um... And then she even said that the candy wanted to lick her box. Y'all know candy wasn't having that. I hope y'all. I know y'all saw the you know the little uh, tweets and shit that I had up at the very beginning of this video. But all right, all right. What 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 else we going with this? <laughs> and then um. Nene was supposed to be there, but Nene pretty much says that there's an elephant between her and Sheree, but there's many elephants between her and Kim. And the only thing that I can really think of is the elephant between her and Sheree is the fact that she invited uh, Kim over. That's the only thing I can think of. And then Kim mentions the whole Snapchat and her daughter and the whole cockroach thing and whatnot. And it was just like, okay, well... Alright, here we go with this storyline. We're going to see where the fuck this goes. So we got Cynthia uh, is doing a back school um, drive at uh, the Bailey Agency. You have uh, Kenya and Mel there. Will shows up bearing gifts for the uh, drive. He tells them that he's going to Brazil. Kenya mentions, uh, you know, there's legal prostitutions. And Cynthia <laughs> seems um, concerned about that. And you know, but Cynthia is acting very schoolgirlish around him, and Ken's looking at her like, "You need to get it together. Your ass is grown. You fit it. Stop it." And now we get to the big part of the motherfucking episode. So they're um at this is at the elephant, I guess party thing. And the medium is uh, Mbele. She's supposed to be an energy reader and whatnot. I'm going to call her BB. I'm just going to call her as BB. So she says to um, Nini, this is a no phone area and whatnot. She even had Nini had to give her a general synopsis, but didn't want her to tell her too much because, you know, she wanted to be able to, you know, kind of hone in on the girls herself. But I do believe partially that production probably told her some shit. I wouldn't put it past them. Or, um, the girls come in. So she shook Nene's hand. Cynthia comes in. She shook Cynthia's hand. But she was eyeballing the fuck out of her. And it was, and I, I'm, this is one of those where you, even though Bebe has a strong personality, you can tell she was immediately intimidated by Cynthia. And shit, I will be too. Y'all see how fucking fine I sent the ass is. But, but I digress. Fucking digress. Candy and all the other girls come and she's like, oh, I don't shake hands. I hug. And Bravo being the shady motherfuckers they is, rolled it back. Because <laughs> she shook two hands before that. 
but it is what it is. So of course they they take the phones and whatnot. Kim is the only one that doesn't want to give her give up her phone because she's like, oh well, you know, I need to have my phone. Uh, you know, I got six kids at home, and she had mentioned Croy, and I think the whole thing is she want to keep her phone with her so it's some shit. Cause you can't tell me Cor Croy was not nearby because she was gonna call him if shit got too hot for that ass. So she can call Croy, so Croy can go ahead and come the fuck in and save her. Y'all, y'all think I'm stretched? Y'all think I'm, uh, it's, it's a bit of a stretch because I don't. Because that's the shit that Kim does every time she's around these girls. Croy is not that fucking far away. Just saying. What fuck else? Um. <laughs> so she's going through the girls. She says that you know with Sheree, you know she needs to start uh, finish what she starts, stand firm with her stuff, don't be indecisive. She says, uh. Candy hears and sees things. It's like a deja vu. Candy says another psyche had told her that. And she wish she knew how to tap the fuck into it so she can make better money moves. She says, Sanini, you uh, you have a heart of solid gold. You really care for people. And I think that is only because that, uh, yeah, she cares enough to sit here and give you some motherfucking business and some shine or whatnot. Then it's all the fuck that it is. But, okay, whatever. I'm not saying that Nini is or ain't, but I'm just saying. And then she gets to Cynthia and she says that, you know, I normally try not to hear and, you know, get any information. But I heard, and they actually talked about uh, Cynthia's uh, situation, Cynthia, Candy, and Nene. So she was like, normally you don't want to hear what nobody has to say. But in this instance, you know, your friends are not right. You need to listen to them this time. And it was so much attitude behind it. Because she was trying to knock Cynthia down a peg. I wish Cynthia would have said this out of her confession. She said some along the lines of, uh, Miss Bailey was next. And I was like, Cynthia needs to have that motherfucking attitude. Like, let these motherfuckers know. My name is Cynthia motherfucking Bailey. Okay? Don't get that shit twisted. Runway motherfucking super model. Okay? Fashions, bitch. Legs and body for days, bitch. Hair always on fleek, bitch. Well, most of the time. Always on fleek, bitch. Like, that's the ass who she needs to have when a motherfucker say something. And who are you again? She needs to put out there, like, who are you? Because I, I was defined before this shit, before this show. Who, who are you? What you do? I'm just saying, like, she said that you need to boss fuck up on their asses and shit. Anyway. Kim is talking so much shit, mumbling under her breath. Now, Baby has a strong personality. She's a little bit overbearing. But, you know, she says, she calls her out on it. And, you know, um. Hold, hold on. Because she, Kim tells her, for you to be of a higher power or whatever, you're not acting like I am of a higher power. I don't think nobody else caught that shit, but I caught it. If y'all ever pay attention to Kim, especially when she's around this group of girls, she has this superiority complex, even though she ain't did shit and she ain't got shit about her. So she feels she's better than every last one of their asses. Why? I'm a fucking say because they're fucking black. She feels she's better than them. So obviously she feels that she is better than Baby. And that was, so when she says, I am of a higher power, she was pretty much just trying to say, bitch, I'm better than you. Tell me if y'all caught it. Trust me when I say that shit got up under my skin. I, I want to feel him, Baby, but that shit got up under my skin. It's some, some heavy. And Baby pretty much told her, like, look, <laughs> you, whatever you put out, you get it back. And Kenya, uh, she says to her that you won't be here much longer. You have a different destiny. Could be that she got fired from the show or could be just like you got something big and better than this shit right here. And and we know that Kenya knows how to produce. And again, I think that she really needs to have her producer hat on. Hell, she can be on the producer side of this damn show and collect the producer checks. I'm just saying. So Kim... Is saying her that she's been read read by the best and this is bullshit. And Kenya just had to be like, look, I'm tired of the back and forth, tired of the bullshit. Either you're going to sit here and listen or you can leave. And everybody kind of looked like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Because it seemed like nobody wanted to say anything. And if y'all don't watch Color Me Pink, I recommend you subscribe to her channel. She is thorough. And she is cutthroat, straight to the point. Funny as fuck. I fucking love her. But she did say something in one of the earlier 
episodes, I think it was the uh, Nene All White Party where Nene is indecisive and she's straddling the fence trying to figure out if she was going to be on Kim's side or on, uh, what's her name? Kenya's side. So she's kind of straddling that fence. And with everything that happened with, you know, uh, Brielle and Kim and the party and whatnot, it seemed like her alliance was going to shift more towards Kenya. Because if that wasn't the case, and I still think at this point she was still indecisive because I don't think that they had necessarily addressed the Brielle thing. I don't know if it, it, if it had actually reached Nene yet. Cause I feel like she would have been brought the shit up. So I think that's why Nene didn't say anything. And fuck it, it just took Kenya to say something. So, <laughs> so Bay Bay pretty much asked them to switch seats because their energy is fucked up. And she asked Kim, you know, if she was to present her with a bath, will you allow me to clean you so we can start our new one? Now, I don't necessarily think she was necessarily talking about a real bath. She might have. Maybe it could have been metaphorical. How about, how about we just, you know, wash our hands clean to this and start again? Kim ain't having it. Don't want to fucking do it. And, you know, baby leaves and just said, I just said, fuck it, fuck you, fuck your energy, all this other shit. So Kim decides she wants to take over and she wants to, you know, mediate shit. So, <clears throat> Candy brings up Nene and Portia. Nene says, y'all got elephants. And Candy says, elephants live a long time. Meaning, I ain't ready to get over the shit between me and this half over here. So then, Sheree brings up Nene saying, well, you said that we had an elephant. But there are many with Kim. And then Sheree asks her what the issue is with Tyrone. Because, you know, you got mug shots too. And I'm like, oh shit, shots fired. So Portia asked Sheree, how did you know about this? And she was like, well, Candy told me. Now, again, Candy should have been upfront about a lot of this shit. But Candy was like, well, we had a conversation about, you know, how um, open you were about your entire uh, relationship and whatnot. I'm surprised nobody called Candy out. I love Candy. I do. But I'm surprised nobody came for Candy. And I think everybody's like, you know, we just not going to do it with Candy. Whatever. So... Kenya wants to have a conversation with Kim because they have a situation. Kim just wants to stay on her phone, and I'm pretty sure she was uh, trying to contact Croy. Cynthia wants to know why they don't like each other. Kenya mentions how um, she inserted herself into the light shade between her and Sheree. Bravo ran those things back. Kenya wasn't lying. And then she also said that at the uh, at Nene's dinner party, she came for me. Bravo ran those tape back. And then she was like, I didn't start with her. And Cynthia was like, no, you didn't. Kim was like, Cynthia, please uh, be quiet. Now, this is when the uh, Cynthia bed I was talking about should have got in that ass. Because all Cynthia was like, don't tell me be quiet. No, Cynthia bed should have been like, who the fuck you talking to? I'm supposed to do what? What? Sp speak up. Remove the wig from your face. What? Like, it would have been one of those ways. It's like, wait, hold on. Who the fuck? Do you, you, you ain't finna tell me shut the fuck up. But her whole thing is you don't know the situation and everything, you know. And for whatever reason, I think Kim knew, okay, let, let me not put. Kim knows who to pull it with to a degree. Because she ain't seen Kenya fight. So she's going to continue to test Kenya. we already seen, you know, uh, Cynthia show that, you know, she had a stone foot. Shout out to Sean, say Sean Bradley. We've already seen other women get physical with her. You know she is not going to come at Nene in such an aggressive way because she know Nene will sit here and, you know, choke her ass. She ain't finna sit here and go at Sheree like that because Sheree will adjust that wig. So she knows who she really wants to pull it with. So you see, she ain't really go that with Cynthia. Okay. Motherfuckers know who to pull it with now. And Kim pretty much wants her to stay cute and be and be a pretty face. Kim and so you know they they ain't getting away the shit's over. And you know, Kim even said that, you know, you can't expect Brielle. For someone to come for Brielle and Brielle not to, you know, respond. And 
Cindy pretty much told like I don't think the kids should be on social media and it kind of cut off there but I think she was trying to say arguing with adults or coming at adults and Kenya was even saying I ain't say shit about your daughter but here's the thing I our kids off limit yes they are but her child is you know in the realm of resume you can't sit here and put and put yourself in grown folk business and don't think you're not going to be handled like grown folks you know I remember many times, shit, I'd be at the table, mom and, said, mom and them was all like, get the fuck out of the kitchen. Grown folks all in this grown folk business. Stay the fuck out of grown folk business. I don't think that was instilled in Brielle to stay the fuck out of grown folk business and don't get into it with an adult. And here's the thing. Her ass legal. She ain't grown, but her ass legal. So it is what the fuck it is. So she needs to make sure that she watch herself because fuck around with the right adult. All that fucking plastic and shit has been done is going to shift. She's going to look like this. I'm just saying. Kim and Nene talk shit contrived. Kim says she doesn't feel like anything was a big deal. Nene mentions the whole handicapped parking shit. I guess it's an issue to her, whatever. Kim says, I feel you were off, like, were you on drugs or whatnot? Again, this is Kim doing that whole trying to sit here and paint people a certain way. No hell for you to want to take drugs. You don't want to do all this other shit. You... And look, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Pete, what I'm going to say, I ain't... I'm not gonna say and talk about her kids, but what I will say is you an ancient parent. You wanna say and talk about your kids, you need to be with your motherfucking kids. The fact that you have already revealed that your dog has sit here and bitch your motherfucking child shows that you an ancient parent and you ain't doing right by your motherfucking kids and you ain't showing them enough attention and that shit can even fucking happen. Kids bumming their head shit like that, that's one thing. But a dog getting at your motherfucking child, that's because you ain't doing the fuck you need to do. So why you worried you know what? That's it. I'm mm, I'm done. Because if I keep going off in the say and say some other shit that we'll say. That's all I got. Rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I see y'all <laughs> Love Hip Hop, Miami, and New York tomorrow. Peace.